Hey there, students of accounting. My name is Steve Willis. Today we are looking at financial accounting. We're looking at early settlement or prompt payment discounts. We're looking at the new approach prescribed by IFRS 15. These changes happened in 2018. So if you learned this topic some years ago, the new approach might be different from what you know. In this video, I'll show you how it is now done. If you find it useful, feel free to throw down a like and subscribe if you'd like more of these. Now, let's jump in and get started. We are looking at early settlement discounts, also known as prompt payment discounts under IFRS. Let's look at a basic scenario. My customer, Fred, buys $100 worth of goods, and our terms for early settlement are 10% if you pay within 10 days. Let's now record the transaction. In order to do this, we need to consider what the customer will do. We look at the customer's past experience and we use judgment. Do we think the customer will pay early or will they pay later? And we book the transaction according to what we think they will do. In our simple example, there are two options. The customer could pay early, taking the discount, or pay later, declining the discount. If we think the customer is going to pay early and take the discount, we debit receivables 90 and we credit sales 90. So we book the transaction net of the discount. If we think our customer is going to pay later, we record the transaction by debiting receivables 100 and crediting sales 100. So we book the transaction without the discount. Let us now record the payment. And one of two things can happen. The customer does as expected or the customer does the other thing, what's unexpected. So let's take the expected payment. The customer settles within 10 days and will pay us $90 in cash. So we simply will debit cash 90, credit receivables 90, closing out our customer's account. So that's easy. We debit cash, credit receivables, the amount that we received. Let's now move to the second option when we expected our customers to pay later. And if they do as expected, paying us $100 after 10 days, we record the transaction the same way, debiting cash, crediting receivables. So that will be a debit of to cash of 100, credit receivables 100. Debits and credits, the same approach. Let us look at the trickier option now when the customer does the unexpected thing. So in the first option, we expected our customer to pay early. Now, if they pay later, we will collect $100 in cash. So that is a debit to cash of 100. However, we can only put a credit of 90 into receivables to close their account. So we will credit receivables 90. Now we have another 10 hanging around. So we will then credit sales with that balancing figure of 10, putting our revenue back to 100. So essentially we record the cash, debit cash, credit receivables, balancing figure to sales. Let's go back to the second option now. When we expected our customer to decline the discount. The unexpected option would be for that customer to actually take the discount, only paying $90 to close their account. So we will collect cash of 90, 
we debit cash 90, credit receivables 90. But we have a problem now. There's still a debit balance of 10 hanging around in that receivables account that we need to get rid of. So we get rid of that with a debit to sales credit receivables. So we debit sales 10, bringing sales down to the 90, reflecting how much revenue we earned from that customer. And the corresponding credit is then to receivables. So to recap those transactions, we collect cash of 90. So we debit cash 90, credit receivables 90. Now to get rid of the remaining 10, we debit sales 10, credit receivables 10, closing the account and bringing sales down to the actual revenue earned from that customer. Friends, I hope that helped. If you go back to whatever textbook you're using to learn that, have a look again. Hopefully it makes sense to you now. This is Steve signing out. Goodbye for now.